Hey everyone, it's Brad Kenny from the Agunquit Playhouse back here on OPTV with another segment in our Checking In series. And this time I get to check in with one of our favorite friends here at the Agunquit Playhouse, someone we consider a family member. Help me welcome to Checking In, Mr. Carson Cressley. Hello, Carson. Hi, that was such a nice intro. Thank you for that, um, family member. That was great. And uh, I'm just thrilled to, um, anytime I think of a gun quit and the gun quit playhouse, uh, I just have a big smile on my face because it was, it's always such a fun time. I love the town. I love that playhouse. There's so much history. I just read a book about Tallulah Bankhead and about like the 1920s and 1930s, like summer stock circuit. And I know she must have been there. And um, I just think it's one of the greatest places ever. And uh, I'm very, very sad that there's not a season this year, but I'm thrilled to be here checking in. And um, I know you guys are going to be back in operation for a huge year next year. Well, last time you and I were together, we were in Palm Beach. We got to see each other down there for, I think, Women's, was it Women's Day or it was Women's Empowerment yeah. Day? Yeah, it was International and Women's Day. And of course, we were doing um, events celebrating that and fashion events and um, fundraiser events. And uh, uh, that was such a fun uh, weekend. And I think it was like maybe around March 9th. Um, and it was kind of like the weekend before the world changed uh, because I had left you in Palm Beach and I went to Montreal to film a TV show and I did my three days there and it was time to go home and I was literally in the airport and I was watching the president's speech about closing the borders to Europe and I was like, gosh, I've got to get home. This is insane. And uh, now everything's just so different. Right. Did you ever go back to New York? I went to New York, I have an apartment there and I got a bag and uh, I had originally booked my ticket to go from Montreal to New York anyway, but I was literally there for about you know 30 minutes and then um, I jumped on the train and I came to my farm in Pennsylvania, which is where I am now. Wow, 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 wow. And so you're there and um, you have the horses. I know your love for all things equestrian and such. So tell me yes. about what it's like there. Are you keeping, is it you and the horses? Do you have an entourage of people around you? What's, what's going uh, on? I, I have an entourage of horses. There's about 22 horses here and that's wow. about 21 too many. <laughs> um, for one person, but um, my family, um, we have a little bit of like, it's a family farm that we've had since the 1920s, and my sister has a house here, and I have a house here, um, so I get to see her and my niece, and uh, honestly, uh, I know this is such a difficult time for everybody, but I have been so blessed to be here um, in a beautiful space where I can be outdoors, and I can be with the horses, and it is my great passion and the silver lining is normally I don't have any time. I would probably be in LA right now filming um, the 13th season of RuPaul's Drag Race. And um, I, I miss my summers here. So now I can see the horses every day. I tell all my friends that I'm turning Amish because I clean stalls in the morning. I bake a pie in the afternoon. I was like sewing curtains one night and I was like, it's, it's turning into Little House on the Prairie, um, but it's been very nice and relaxing and I'm doing what I can to stay creative. And I think, you know, for creatives, this um, is an interesting time because we're all doing things that are not normal. Like I'm not filming a television show right now, but I'm still, I'm reading plays. I'm coming up with new show ideas. Um, I'm painting and cooking and baking and just trying to be creative and it's been actually um really interesting and not terrible despite all the terrible things that are going on in the world right wow tell me about the painting i'm a painter what are you painting watercolors oils oh. acrylic? no i'm doing acrylic i tried oils and then i was just like wait a minute this is taking three weeks to dry i don't have that even though there's a pandemic i don't have that kind of time <laughs> uh, and uh because I dabble in interior design and I've done some interior design shows, I always see this great artwork at the big international home show and the High Point Market. And I was like, I could make that. Um, so I just, I have some great big canvases and I just do kind of geometrics and modern things and super colorful. Wow. And um, I'm, I'm super into like, you know, Jasper Johns and uh, 
uh, who have Andy Warhol, like just bold, kind of almost like prints, even though they're, they're painted. Wow. It sounds like something that you could maybe turn into fabric for QVC or something. See, I'm, I'm too much of an, I, an entrepreneur, but it's, uh, it sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I love, yeah, anything that can be turned into textiles and like, I'm really feeling like Pucci and Mary Mecco and all of the brights and the florals. So um, that's always a possibility. Good idea, Brad. So you're there and you're looking at plays maybe for something that you have a dream of stepping into or literarily or how, tell me about the plays and looking at them. Um, you know, I was doing one of these interviews yesterday um, with a guy named Larry Flick and it was to promote another, a TV show. And he said, you really have to do more acting. I love that um, side of your career. And I said, well, um, yeah, I could do that. So then I got inspired and I was starting to just research some plays. Um, there's a really fun one called um, I Take This Man. Have you heard of that one? No. It's basically, um, it takes place in Boston and uh, the protagonist is a lady, but I think it could be a man and she finds an unconscious man in Boston Commons after like a parade or no the boston marathon and she okay. takes him home and when he comes to um he has amnesia and she says oh you're my husband um so i was like wait that'd be a great vehicle for me but i would say when the guy wakes up i'd be like you're gay and you're my husband <laughs> um, so it, it's a it's a comedy of errors and i haven't read the whole thing i just ordered it you can order these plays online but it's called i take this man and uh, it sounds really um, funny slash illegal uh, because good. she's kind of kidnapping this person. Well, you know, we're um, always so that's the one that's my. We need to. We're um, we do a lot of new works. We had some world premieres coming this year, and of course they'll come back. But um, we're looking at doing some readings on Zoom. So if you find one and we want to get some friends together, we could do a Zoom reading of it. And uh, uh, maybe... I would love that. I saw you may also be doing one of my favorite, favorite products of all time is Sorted Lives, because I knew Rue McClanahan, and she is one of your cohorts at the Agonquit Playhouse and worked with us here before she passed. But tell me about Sorted Lives is happening and, and what, what's going on there. Well, Sorted Lives, and you know um, Del Shores, who's the playwright. Um, there was the original um, movie with Olivia Newton-John and um, uh, uh, Leslie and... Um, then they did a second, a second series for Logo that was going to be a movie, but it wound up being chopped up into a television show. Okay. And I think it was called like More Sorted Lives or Sorted Tales. I did that show. I played a psychiatrist who was very inappropriate. And um, so when Dell was doing this benefit for a lot of the independent theaters that he works with, uh, I jumped on board. Um, with Olivia and Caroline Ray and a bunch of his um, go-to characters and, and actors. And uh, I was just a part of that. So I don't know if they're gonna do like another iteration, but uh, I would be game to do it. Okay, yeah, that's great. Caroline Ray lives right up the road in Kenny Bunkport, by the way. I don't know if you guys have ever connected about your mutual yeah. love, but sometimes you see her in the area. Yeah, yeah, I know that she's a huge fan of Maine. And, um, and I know that's right up the street. I used to go there to get some lobster rolls when I was at the Playhouse and I would always run into um, President Bush um, Sr. I'd run into his like Secret Service detail and they were always so handsome. And I was like, hi guys, I'm just here getting a lobster roll. Um, and they were so lovely and nice. Well, I remember um, speaking of the Bushes, you're bringing back to memory that you, um, we were doing the Drowsy Chaperone together, you, all of us, and um, the president, uh, senior, 41, uh, contacted me um, himself, and he said it was Barbara's birthday was coming up that week. And, um, and so he said, I need something to do for her birthday, and I want to surprise her. And the family was in town, and I can remember Laura Bush, I think, was there as well. And um, I had to go to you and take you into the patio outside my office and say, the only problem was, our show was not on stage yet, and we had to invite the Bush family in for our dress rehearsal. Do you remember doing all yes. that? Wheeling out a birthday cake for her. So, and um, I remember how much she adored you, Barbara. And uh, I have an image in my head 
of the two of you comparing, I think your Belgian slippers or she had Belgian slippers on and- uh, Oh yeah, talking. Belgian loafers, yeah. Belgian loafers, yeah, so. No, that was a really, um, that is a very fond memory of mine and of a Dunquit. And uh, that was the first, you know, like big play that I had ever done. So thank you for believing in me. And uh, it was, um, there are two interesting stories about that. Um, I had a friend who was another actor come with me and run lines and that patio on the side of the Agunquit Playhouse, which is where I fell in love with the place because I came to see La Caja Faux like 10 years before with a friend of mine who was in it, Cameron. Right. And I remember having like champagne um, during intermission on the patio. And I was like, this place is incredible. I love that you have like hitching posts and it's got green and white awnings. I was like, this is like heaven, summertime perfection. And I was like, I want to come back here. And then when I was doing my rehearsing for Drowsy Chaperone, uh, I would go out on that patio and I'd run lines. And I swear to God that this sounds insane. But I think that Betty Davis came to me. And because I would be doing lines and I'd be like, I don't understand. And I was like, why am I doing this with my hands and like talking like Betty Davis? It was very weird. And maybe I had just seen her photo in the dressing room and I was like putting that into the ether, but I swear she was helping me get through that. And then you said, um, the before even a dress rehearsal, I think maybe we had one tech rehearsal and I was terrified I was gonna forget like 93 pages of dialogue. And when you're the narrator, you don't have anybody to like cue you. It's just you on the stage and the people on the stage aren't supposed to be able to see you, um, the other actors. And uh, I was just like, can't we just have like a, a monitor with like the lines on it? And they're like, no, that's not how it works in the theater. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> then you came to me and said, we have a special guest coming. And are you comfortable um, having them see the dress rehearsal? And I said something to the effect of, if I'm gonna suck, I'm gonna suck either way. It doesn't matter who's there. So sure, that's fine. And I was like, who is it? And you're like, the president of the United States of America <laughs> and the former first lady. And I was like, okay. And then I just remember being in the empty theater and there was like six people like, a couple of bushes in the middle and then like four secret service guards. And you could really see faces and people when there's only four of them in the audience. <laughs> um, but it went off, I think it went off without a hitch and they were so delightful. And um, I remember we did the cake and I was very sassy with Barbara and um, President Bush. And, um, and yes, Laura was there as well. And uh, it was really, um, it was just an incredible uh, moment. It was very uh, insane that this was happening. Um, you mentioned uh, Drag Race a little bit. I'm a fan. I love the, uh, the messaging around it. And um, we've been actually, it's been one of the binge, thinging, binge things that my partner Ken and I have been doing up here in Agunk, but we're here. And um, we've started back at season one and then we jump forward to watch a little bit of you because I want to see you as well. And so we've been jumping back and forth and. Um, you know, I, it reminds me of a couple of things that um, that I'm just so thankful that the show is out there, that um, that Rue found you and that, and that you've become part of that family because I think, A, that the show has an incredible message about, you know, loving yourself and, and embracing it and also of how um, I'm kind of a, a pseudo parent and I've helped raise some kids and... Um, you know, you all hold these contestants to an incredibly high standard and you call them on their stuff if it's not right. Yeah, right. it always ends with, um, you know, about a loving yourself. And so, um, you know, I think you all make up like a panel of, when I see you in particular with Rue sitting side by side, um, you remind me of a, a pair of parents. And, you know, you're, you treat them with humor and kindness and love but you call them on their stuff and uh, you know, how lucky they are, I think, to have you and how you found that, so. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm lucky as well. And it was a very serendipitous, um, you know, I was a fan of the show and I tell this to young people all the time who are in show business, like um, take every opportunity because you never know where it's going to lead you. 
And I was doing this other show called Skin Wars, and it was on the Game Show Network, and it was about body painting. And Rebecca Romaine and Rue were kind of the co-hosts of that. And I was on set, and Rue was like, you know, why um, haven't you done my show? And I was like, I don't know. Have you guys asked? And they're like, yeah, of course. And I was like, I don't know, but um, count me in. And that was like seven years ago. And uh, I've been doing the show season seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and now hopefully, hopefully um, 13 at some point. And um, it's just been a great, it's been a great thing to be part of such a positive show. And I've always been a fan of drag. And I was, you know, at Wigstock in the 90s and going to all the clubs in New York. And I knew a lot of the, you know, Lady Bunnies and Misunderstood. And of course, I had run into Rue. Um, because we're from the same era and um, it's just such a fun show to be a part of and you're absolutely right it has a positive message we we on the judging panel just really want to make sure that these kids and they literally are kids nowadays like 20 years old um, have a sense of history and know about pop culture and um, and we give them the positive encouragement that they can be the best version of themselves and the best craft people of their art that they possibly can and uh it's just really fun to be a part of it any dream role that's on your dream bucket list for um theater give me a theater role is there anything in your mind that oh. you want to pick up the phone and get someone to produce you in like maybe us or i i i really been feeling like classic neil simon and i was thinking like the odd couple would be really fun oh that's a great idea that is a great, great, great idea. Yeah, with like my straight man being like a professional athlete or somebody. <laughs> That's brilliant. Anything else we should know about what you've got coming up or anything you want to tell the folks about? Oh, yeah, I have lots of fun things. Um, we have the season 12 finale of Drag Race, which is um, this Friday. I don't know how soon this is going to air. And then we have a new season of All Stars, which starts June 5th on VH1. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be amazing. And then also um, the 31st of May, uh, I'll be with the original Queer Eyes versus the new school Queer Eyes on Celebrity Family Feud, wow. which was really <laughs> fun. And um, it was epic having the two casts together. And so weird that like, I was like, wait, we did this show 20 years ago and now there's a new cast doing it. That's like, they're just, um, they're so young. Uh, so that was really fun. And, uh, and then uh, I think I'm the only person that's doing two, two episodes of Celebrity Family Feud because I come back mid-June to do um, uh, Drag Race versus the Bold Type. So there's, it's six degrees of Carson Kressley wow. on Celeb Family Feud wow. this season. So um, that'll be fun. And that starts on Sunday. That's, well, break a leg and all that. Congratulations. You, you haven't stopped. You know, you as a game show host, not that you have any more time during the day to do anything, but that's not such a bad idea. Oh, Take no, I would love that. That has been on my list. Um, um, send the prices right my way. I would love to do it. It's a game show about shopping. I would, I would <laughs> You're right. Die. Any advice of what people should be wearing in quarantine from Carson oh. Press? Um, I think it is all about... Um, it's all about this, you know, it's we're like we're all newscasters now because we're all on Zoom and we nobody no, really needs to wear pants anymore. So I would say invest in high quality tops that are fun and colorful and make you feel great. And then you can just wear no pants. And you heard it here. Um, time saving, money saving and still chic. I love it. All right. Well, we'll leave you there. Thank you, Carson. We love you so much. And it's been a joy to spend this time with you and see you Thank again. you. And I hope I get to see all of you. Um, I'm, even if I'm not doing a show, I'm coming next summer because I, I need some agunquit magic. We love you. We'll see you there. Thank okay, you. Okay, bye.